let's put our hands up if you're a black woman or a woman of color and you absolutely know your shit and in the workplace or through conducting your business you've been described as being too loud or too direct or too aggressive hi everyone welcome to my channel this video is going to be the book club edition now the world is a really scary place at the moment we're in the throes of a global pandemic um, we had a racial reckoning that we're still confronting and dealing with and the world that we're in today looks very different to what it looked like even a year ago yet despite all of that we all have our personal ambitions whether that's in work in business or professionally the things that we want to achieve that feel scary and daunting particularly if you want to do something that has um, impact you know something that causes change doing things like that can just scare the shit out of you and so many of us know what it feels like when fear gets in the way of you achieving the thing that you want to do this is why i was drawn to this book the fear fighter manual lessons from a professional troublemaker by lavi ajayi jones if you don't know lavi she's a writer and author of a new york times bestseller i'm judging you She's also the host of the Professional Troublemaker podcast and the co-host of one of my favorite podcasts of all time, Jesus and Jalof. This book is right on time because as we're filming this, one of the people who I consider to be the ultimate fear fighter, i.e. the Duchess of Sussex, is going to be having a sit-down interview with Oprah later on tonight. And I will touch on that later. In this video, I'm going to share my five takeaways from this book. And obviously my perspective is that of a black immigrant African woman living in London in the UK who owns a purpose-driven business, also does paid employment 30 hours a week by design. And so I'm looking at this through the lens of the personal, the professional, and also business as well. So Lovey's approach to her book is that she has three sections, and then I would say they're like 16 stepping stones which if you work through the process in the book, as an individual, you should find the tools and the resources to confront your fears, whatever this may be, whether they're personal, whether they're business, whether it's at work, and just create a plan that you can move forward with some courage. My first takeaway from Lovey's book is actually two themes which I joined together because I feel they're quite connected. The first is the fear of success, and the second is this idea of being too much. And there's a quote from the book which I absolutely love, and I'm just going to read that in a moment. My fear of success is certainly real because I know new levels bring new devils. Whoa. Now, I can think of an immediate example of someone who would slot really well into what Lovey is trying to tell us. In this book, Lovey explores a theme that is familiar for a lot of women, particularly black women and women of color. Put, let's put our hands up if you're a black woman or a woman of color and you absolutely know your shit and in the workplace or through conducting your business, you've been described as being too loud or too direct or too aggressive. You know, I, I think those are all themes that are really familiar to us. It usually comes about when you are occupying spaces that people are not used to seeing you in. And at a global level, we've seen this with the Duchess of Sussex. If you ask me for a person who is the definition of a fear fighter, as per Lavi's book, she's the first person that comes to mind. In the four decisions that she's made over the last um, four years, the decision to join the royal family, the decision to leave the royal family with her husband. It is a decision that they made jointly and he was clearly a driver for it as much as she was. Her decision to take the tabloids to court and also her decision to have a sit down conversation with Oprah, which at the time of filming this hasn't come out. So I'm going to be sitting there with everyone else waiting for that to air. And just thinking about the Duchess for a moment. This woman was a self-made millionaire before she joined the royal family. She was a complete and accomplished woman who had worked in the real world. You know, she knows how to navigate herself in the workplace. And any person who had spoken to her in the past had always described how kind, how thoughtful, and how easy she was to work with. When she joined the royal family, she basically smashed the ceiling of being a duchess. And what do I mean by that? She just made it look so easy. First, we had the amazing cookbook with the ladies from Grenfell. Then the collaboration with Vogue, which is just a complete sellout. You know, all of the magazines flew off the shelf. We had successful royal tours while she was pregnant. 
we also had a sold out collection with Smartworks. You know, her work really spoke for itself and she was highly effective in that role. Yet, we saw huge amounts of press intrusion, harassment by the tabloids, which was all completely unwarranted. And, and I think that's why I was saying that those two ideas are connected. The idea of being too much and the idea that when certain women are in a position of success, the society and the environment can find it really challenging to deal with. And I'm going to touch on that in a, in a moment. On this point about success and looking at the themes from a business perspective, I really enjoyed Lavi taking us through the behind the scenes of her TED Talk. Her TED Talk has since had 5 million views. It's been hugely successful, but she almost didn't do it. She turned it down twice. Before the third time, she was presented with an opportunity to do it. She phoned up one of her friends, Unique, and Unique just sort of reminded her who she was. And she just had to sort of confront where she was and cut through her fear to deliver this TED Talk, which has since had 5 million views and has completely changed her life. I'm not going to give you any spoilers on that section, but it was so reassuring to recognize that our faves go through the same things that we do. They have the same fears that we have. And it was insightful to see how she cut through that herself. And touching again on that connection between the fear of success and being too much. And going back to the example of the Duchess of Sussex, what I really admire about her is there's no doubt that this situation has been so painful for her, yet she has always stayed true to who she is. She has always been courageous. She has a really strong sense of self and that just comes through with everything that she does. I mean, Sis was getting companies to change their adverts aged 11. You know, that is someone who is not afraid to stand up for what she thinks is right, to stand up for herself. And we are seeing evidence of that to date. The thing that makes you different is actually your secret sauce. That's the thing that makes you unique and special. And that's the thing that you need to tap into. So if you're in an environment where people are making you feel like you're too much, a bit like what the Duchess has done, you take yourself out of that environment and to another environment where people will celebrate you for who you are, where people accept you for who you are. And more importantly, they will pay you for that thing that other people have described as being too much. My favorite fear fighter who is absolutely too much in the, in the loveliest way, and I adore her for it, is Bosoma St. John, who happens to be a good friend of Lovey's. If you need a little bit of courage, just go onto her Instagram now and follow her. She is the best example I know of living boldly and being absolutely true to who you are. One of the other really practical things I love about this book is the tools that Lovey gives you. So just on that point of being too much, Lovey shares three questions that you can ask yourself to work out whether you are in fact being too much and there's an issue that you need to address or it's just other people's perception of you and you can stay true to who you are. Again, I'm not going to give any spoilers there in the book, but I just find that that was a really useful tool that anyone who is working through that would be able to get the answers that they need. So the next takeaway from this book is failing loudly. Let me tell you, when I got to that chapter, I was like, lovey, come on. I am not about to fail loudly in these streets. I'm sorry, I am a black woman. We do not get the benefit of the doubt. We do not have unlimited resources where we can experiment with things and try things out and things work or things don't work. We just don't have the luxury of doing that. Me, if I fail, I'm going to fail quietly in my room with my weighted blanket on top of me and hopefully I will tell nobody about it. So when I got to that chapter of Lovey's book, I felt really challenged when I saw the words fail loudly. But what I've learned is there's always something in it. You know, when you read something and it just gives you a reaction, it means there's a little bit of work there to do. Lovey explores her own experience of failing loudly, what it felt like, how she navigated it and how she got to the other side. If you're going to do something significant, if you're going to do something of impact, something that is going to achieve change, failure is something that you're going to confront and you have to develop the tools to help you to deal with that situation if it arises. As the founder of a business that helps people to discover other businesses by black women and women of color, this chapter about failure really hit me hard in the face because the reality is I can't move anyhow because if I make the wrong moves, it reflects not just on me, but on the brands that are part of the list. And so 
or, you know, for me, before I take a bold move or before I take a big move, I have to really, really carefully consider it. So for example, one of the boldest moves that I took as a business was when I took Janet's list, um, when I took our concept store to Amsterdam. It was a big, bold move and I was completely petrified. It worked really well. It is one of the best things I've ever done. But it is a clear example for me personally of where I almost let fear get in the way. There were so many times I almost like backed out of that project. But at the end, I was able to work through it. And part of the reason for that is I had uh, amazing support from my coach, Jessica Rogers. I had Adonika, who was part of my team, who took the leap to go to Amsterdam with me. And I had my partner who was very supportive in helping me work through it. So, you know, finding that squad of people who can help you when you want to do big things and help you to push through and have that courage is such an important thing. And Lavi touches on this in her book. Another great thing I got from Lavi's book is this idea of the fear of giving up control and how important it is to get out of your own way so that you can do the big thing that you need to do. Lavi did a great job of exploring the theme of self-reliance and she actually used herself as an example. And it's this idea of how being extremely self-reliant can actually be detrimental, not just to you, but to your business. So if you're a solo founder, if you're a freelancer, I, I felt that there were so many themes that were relevant to people in that category. And, and what came out for me was this idea of accepting help and support and how if you're not proactive about doing it yourself, life happens and things can cause you to have to change the way you are and you have to learn how to accept help and support. Now, one of the anchors for this book is Lovey's grandma. Mama follow you and the book is dedicated to her and and lovey threads the themes that run through this book using amazing stories from her grandmother and her experiences she shares the story of how her extremely self-reliant grandmother through a variety of circumstances had to learn to lean on the people who are closest to her and i thought it was a very personable way of getting that theme across lavi shared the story of how trying to do it all can actually get in the way of you living your best life and she gave an example that was highly relevant to my interest it was a coming together of her being on holiday in kenya where i'm from her having to wake up at 5 a.m. while on holiday to write a couple of articles on Scandal, which was one of my favorite shows, like I worshipped at the altar of Olivia Pope. And all of this was happening while her and her friends were trying to go to the Elephant Orphanage in Nairobi, one of the cutest, nicest experiences and highly relevant to my interest. And she talks about how she did all of that, but it just left her feeling so exhausted. And it was one of the moments that really made her self-reflect and be like, you know what? This idea of doing everything on my own, it needs to change. And I need to start thinking about systems and delegating stuff to people and putting things on place so that I can actually do the big things that I want to do, but live my life at the same time. And I thought that um, theme was really well explored in the book. So if you're a control freak who just doesn't know how to delegate, I feel like you will get a lot out of that section of the book. So a book about fear and confronting that to do the things that you want to do wouldn't be complete without a chapter on imposter syndrome. And I think Lovey explores the themes in that chapter quite well. You know, Lovey tells us the story of how she ended up at Oprah's branch. And you know, you're in the room with all of these women and you're looking around and thinking to yourself, why am I here? You know, Lovey says, if you're in the room, you deserve to be in the room and just accept your place and make the most of it. And I, I love that. I love reading all of the different ways she talks about imposter syndrome and how it affects our lives. The thing that really stood out to me is this, again, something that as black women and women of color we experience, it's when people project imposter syndrome onto you and you're not actually feeling that imposter syndrome. I think it's something to really think about. Um, you know, people's perceptions of black women and women of color in the workplace and in business can be very dodgy. I remember when I was practicing as a family law barrister, I, I can't tell you the number of times I would turn up to court. And instead of people assuming that I was the lawyer or the barrister, or even before I had an opportunity to say why I was there, people would assume that I was the social worker. People would assume I was a housing officer. People would assume I was one of the parties involved in the case, just because I happened to be a young looking woman who's black and speaks with an African accent. What I'm trying to say is just be really careful to make sure that other people's perceptions of you 
don't give you imposter syndrome when you actually know what the fuck you're doing and you know that you're good at your job or that you're great at your business. So I think that's just a, a distinction that I wanted um, to speak about. It was so hard for me to settle on a takeaway because trust me, if I had the opportunity to explore each one of the 16 stepping stones that she talks about in her book, I would do that in this video. There are a couple of chapters in the book that felt really pertinent. One was the one where she was simply imploring all of us to ask for more. It's March 2021. It's also International Women's Day. And how many of us have had requests to speak at events linked to International Women's Day and people are not attaching a budget to that? We need to ask for more. If you're sitting in your job thinking, you know what, I'm doing the job of two people and I don't feel like I'm getting the pay that I deserve, go ahead and ask for more. You know, Lavi has spoken about how the book actually changed the life of one of the ladies in her team who worked in the publishing house and actually the process of editing the book made her A, ask for, for more money, but she ended up not just with a promotion for herself, but also a promotion for her assistant. It's exactly that, you know, when you have a book that makes you think about different ways that you can take action and apply them to your life, that's the kind of book that really appeals to me. And I love the practical and tangible things that Lovey suggests in this book. So I'm going to end this video with a suggestion. One of the things that Lovey says in this book is that we should always listen to black women. She also says that we should all get a Nigerian friend. Well, I'm going to give you that in spades. Not only am I going to suggest that we should listen to black women, I am going to point you in the direction of a YouTube video where we have three black women of Nigerian descent discussing the situation with the Duchess of Sussex on mainstream TV and they absolutely nailed it. It was on point, it was hilarious, it touched on all of the things that we've, we've experienced as black women We've said and we've just never had the platform to get that out in a way that people will understand what it feels like to be a black woman in the workplace, what it feels like to be a black woman in business. And I think they were absolutely spot on. So I'm going to put it either in the box to my left or right. Don't know which one, but definitely I'm going to put it in the description box below. Right. So those are my five takeaways from this amazing book by Lavi, The Fear Fighter Manual. If you're new to this channel, then you'll know that this isn't really the end of the video. And that's because in every video on this channel, we always take a moment to put the spotlight on an amazing brand by a black woman, a woman of color from the UK, which is what we do at Janet's List. In this video, I'm going to put the spotlight on Valerie Christina. This lovely necklace that I'm wearing is from the brand. I bought it from Valerie three or four years ago when I first discovered her. Her African and Greek heritage really feeds into her collection. So if you go onto her website, you'll see that, you know, we have the amazing cute gold shell earrings. We also have the Oceana earrings. One of the things I love about Valerie's pieces is how functional they are. So for example, this necklace that I'm, I'm wearing, I love the fact that it has a magnetic clasp. So you can see that it's so easy to put on and off. You don't have to mess around trying to get it to work and it's the perfect piece. Like, you know, if you need to hop onto a Zoom call and you just want to make yourself look together, but at the same time, if you're going out at night and you want something stylish, it's just one of those pieces that works really well from day to night, which is a big part of how I dress. So if you want to find out more about Valeria Cristina and the pieces that we hold on Janet's list, I'm going to put all the links to that in the description box below. So that brings us to the actual proper ending of this video. Thank you so much. If you want more where this came from, please feel free to subscribe using the subscription button. Where is it? Seriously though, please um, subscribe to the channel. If you have anything to say, put it in the comments and I will see you in the next video.